All right, welcome back to the best new podcast, A Hard to Tell Podcast, episode 12. I never thought we would make it this far. Yeah, but we did make it this far. You sound real angry today, man. <laughs> I'm good. You're good. I'm Apparently, good. Apparently, I look like Joe Budden. Yeah, that's, that's, been, the, that's been the word. And that was a word uh, yeah, before and, we started this podcast. Except you are pretty much wearing the exact same outfit that he had on on the most recent episode of Everyday Struggle. For I don't those have rock. who haven't seen it. <laughs> and let's just get it twisted. I am not DJ Academics. I do not move that way. Um, <laughs> what does that mean? <laughs> First of all. <laughs> you can take that however you want to take Wait, it. Wait, you and the desk are Grenadian. Yes, we have that so, in common. You know, I'm, I happen to be next to Grenadian. That's, well. that's all that's in common with that show. No disrespect to the show. We like the show. Uh, much respect, but you do. I watch it every day. You do every... <laughs> I don't get to watch every day, but you... It's not an everyday struggle for you to watch everyday struggle every yeah, day. there you go. There you go. It ain't hard to tell that I like everyday struggle. There you go. Oh, oh. That's a nice plug. There you go. There you go. Um, so, yeah, we're, we're back. Uh, we're here. A lot, a lot to talk about. And right before we recorded this podcast, uh, we heard some NBA news. And we saw... A guy who was on the trading block. Feels like he's been on the trading block forever. He's free. He is free. Yes. He trusted the process. The process <laughs> came. It has begun. And now he's free of the process. That's Jaleel Okafor. And he is on his way to a team uh, Brian and I both covered. That is the Brooklyn Nets. Yeah. Uh, Jaleel Okafor and Nick Stauskas were sent to Brooklyn uh, for Trevor Booker. And the Nets also received the second round pick, 2019 pick, which the Sixers had received from the Knicks in the Willie Herman Gomez trade uh, on draft night a few years ago. Uh, I guess the quick reaction is, what are your thoughts on the trade? I really sometimes hate getting into who won the trade, lost yeah, the trade I'm thing not. real quick. I've spoken on that before. But I do think that this is an interesting trade that Jalil's finally free. And um, he should get some playing time and opportunity in Brooklyn. It's good for both teams. I think I want to start off by saying that. And here's why it makes sense for both teams. And I don't want to get too sporty here, but I'm probably going to get too sporty here, but whatever. Sporty. <laughs> so we have Trevor Booker, who's in a contract year, just had his best season last year. And he, uh, you know, was somebody who really, really contributed to the Nets' culture on and off the court. Produced, had big-time games, even recently. But him being in a contract year, him being a valuable asset, makes him attractive to other teams. Philadelphia has been wanting to get rid of Jaleel Okafor for a long time, as we know. Mm -hmm. uh, he had a big rookie season, then he slowed down tremendously, had a bunch of other issues, and then they just decided, <clears throat> they just decided excuse me, to stop playing him. Then you've got Nick Stauskas, who is going to be in net now. Uh, <laughs> That's the best thing you had to say about Nick Stauskas? <laughs> It's like, you have Nick Stauskas, he's I'm running, be in that. I'm running through it. I'm running through it. But you have Nick Stauskas also in a contract year. Um, I'll be honest with you, I haven't seen much of him since he was in Michigan. <laughs> so, so he's going to be in that now. <laughs> so, um, but I know he can shoot. He did at Michigan. <laughs> I know his, his numbers aren't, haven't been that great. I mean, but no, he's a serviceable player. Yeah, I mean, that's what I – he almost seems like a throw-in. But – Again, if you're the Nets, you can't really complain much. You also get a second-round pick out of that, too. Which, for Philly, is, it's nothing because they have a bunch of draft picks. Even still, they're still trusting the process, as we know. But for the Nets, you get Jaleel Okafor. I see it as a low-risk, high-reward deal. The reason I say that is because, yes, he's in a contract year, but he also is somebody who was in that same draft as one D'Angelo Russell. And Rondé Hollis Jefferson, by the way. Uh, so now the Nets have the same, the two of the top two three and, picks yeah, from number, that draft Number class. two and number three. Uh, they have the two guys who were also supposed to be very good, like a Porzingis, like a Carl Anthony Towns, but haven't quite panned out to that level yet. We saw D'Angelo moving towards that. Yeah. And we saw G uh, Jaleel Okafor being that his first season and his regress. But this is, again, another move by Sean Marks trying I'm to not, get the most I out think... of a bad situation. Uh, 
you know, Jalil Okafor being in a bad situation previously. Yeah, I think it's a low-risk trade for the Nets. I'm not sure Jalil Okafor has regressed uh, that narrative the way people say it, or it's just more of a fact that his game doesn't currently fit mm. the modern NBA where the NBA is treading. He's a big that is good in the low post offensively, yeah. but not good defensively. He's not good defensively. And so where do you play that guy? He's kind of limited in that. Trevor Booker actually is probably a better defensive player than him, even though their games are very similar offensively. But that's what I want to ask you. Yeah. Do you think that's a, like, does that concern you as far as, because you know the Nets like to pick up the pace, you know the Nets like to move the ball and play quickly on offense. And then you have a back to the basket center who is not out here shooting threes necessarily and things like that. Here's what it comes down to me for the Nets for the rest of the season with Okafor. Can you get him to expand his game a little bit more? Like Can you get? Yeah. I'm not saying you got to get him out to the three-point line. That's probably not going to happen this season. Kenny will try. You, I, but you should. <laughs> but Jared you should. Allen is out here shooting it's, threes it's, now. It's not a bad thing to try to take your young bigs and see if they can shoot and shoot more. And if... If Okafor is willing to do that, and he sounded like he was hungry and wants to play, mm-hmm. and will try to make adjustments to this game, it's going to be fine. But here's another thing that he's going to have to do with Kenny Atkinson. If he wants to play, he's got to start bringing on defensive end. He doesn't look like he can guard you or me right now. He's going to have to start doing that. Yeah, well, Kenny Atkinson, yeah. I mean, he's going to play him only if he can play defense. If he's going to be a defensive liability, uh, you know, he's not going to see time out there on the floor. Nah. But I feel like they're going to ease him in. They're not going to throw him in right away. We're like, right now, at the time we're recording this, the Nets are in Mexico, and they're going to be there for two games, uh, one tonight, the night we're recording this, and then in two nights from now. The next week, I'm going to be at that Nets Wizards game. We'll probably be at the Nets Knicks game as well. Yep, I will be in, should be in the building for that. We'll probably see Jaleel Okafor's debut, uh, it, you know, if it's at that time. So it'll probably, it'll probably, I would assume it would be against the Wizards. I'm curious to see how, just how it all plays out and how it starts, not just how it plays yeah. out, but how it starts, because this is somebody who you should probably just ease him in. And I think Kenny Atkinson's going to do that. He's one to do that, probably get eight, 12 minutes, whatever, right away. Then if we see him produce, you'll see him eventually just play more and more. I don't know how much I'm expecting of him this season because it's kind of like, hey, you want to like gradually ease him in and wait for that development. But at the same time, he's also in a contract year. So I think he's in a situation where it's interesting because he needs to show enough. So then the Nets could, you know, potentially make that long-term commitment. And I think he's going to have the opportunities to show that. It's just really about what he does with those opportunities. If he does nothing with the opportunities, then it's on him. Yeah. That's why, like you said, it's a great low-risk uh, situation um, for the Nets. Mm-hmm. Uh, a lot of other good things going on in the NBA. We talked about narratives. People changing the narratives. A couple weeks ago, oh, what are the Cavs going to do? Cavs are oh, in God. trouble. I don't know <laughs> if they're going to make the playoffs. LeBron is done. Got to break <laughs> up the team. Blah, 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 blah. It's so funny how these narratives change so quick in the NBA. Everybody acts like they know everything, and then boom. And look, the, a couple weeks ago, we were talking about the Jazz, and the Jazz was struggling. And then they won six in a row before they lost to OKC the <laughs> other night. So it's interesting. People really like to, you know, rump, jump on different waves and get all out of sorts. And our producer, Matt Feniza, he was kind of like, yo, we're, we're, we're going to be all right. Word to Kendrick. He's like, we're going to be OK. We be all right. And the Jazz have been more than OK. I've watched a couple, about three of their last six games during this week I got to watch. They've been OK. But back to the Cavs. I'll throw this to you. I'm not surprised at what the Caps have done and turned it around. I still don't think they can beat the Warriors right now, but I'm not surprised at what they've been doing winning 13 in a row. Are you surprised? No. Nah. Uh, for the same reasons that you're not surprised. I mean, and let's remember, I kept saying this too in our earlier NBA conversations. Isaiah Thomas is going to be here eventually. And I saw, actually, I saw a funny quote where LeBron James was talking about how he's, he's been playing a lot of 2K trying to mix and match different things to see how they could play when Isaiah Thomas gets back. They're going to be dangerous, dangerous. They're going to be the Cavs. They're going to be the Cavs that they've been since LeBron's been there. Uh, and they're going to lose to the Warriors in four or five games in the NBA Finals. Like, that's just kind of how this is going to go. Unless, you know, Steph Curry starts, you know, rolling his ankles again. And then, you know, that maybe it'll be a six-game series. But we'll see. I mean, I, I like what I'm seeing from Cleveland. They've been really fun to watch. And LeBron is... It's weird because you think he's at the tail end of his prime, but I mean he looks great. He's playing. He's playing at MVP level. <laughs> he's still in his prime. Are we, are we say, yeah, we're still yeah, saying I'm he's in his prime, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. And he's going to be he's going to be 33 years old, December 30th 
uh, same day that Tiger Woods will turn 40, whatever he is. Interesting that they have the same birthdays. It is interesting. <laughs> Tiger, uh, well, that's, that, that's all in the story. But, yeah, no, <laughs> t- t- teams, teams, are, teams are surprising. Um, oh, no, one thing we didn't get to talk about in the last podcast, we did not get to touch on that happened in the NBA, was the firing of uh, Coach Fisdale oh, yeah. with the Memphis Grizzlies. Yeah. We did not talk about this. This is a young coach in his second year, um, well-respected around the lead. A lot of young players liked him, but he was beefing with his star player. Mm-hmm. And what that firing said to me is, we know who's got the power in Memphis, okay? <laughs> we know exactly who's got the power in Memphis, and it wasn't Coach Fisdale. <laughs> it's Marcus Gasol. Marcus Gasol wasn't feeling him. He didn't like that he got benched. And next thing you know, what? Was it the next day? It was the next day. Yeah, yeah. Bye. It was after they played the Nets, I believe. Yeah. Bye. And I'm like, this is a re- I, I really, I mean, I don't think he'll have a problem getting another job. I really don't think so. But Memphis has a poor track record. You didn't bring back Lionel Hollins, who was a good coach. They did nothing but turn that franchise around. Yeah. Dave Yeager left because he couldn't deal with management. <laughs> right? And now, Fisdale is gone. Those are, what's that, three coaches yeah. in four, five, four, four, four or five years? Four, four and a half years? Yeah. Y'all making the Knicks look good. <laughs> like, that's, I mean, you're whenever making, you, you can make, make the when Knicks. When you can make Knicks management look good. There you go. And I can say that because I'm a Knicks fan. When you can make Knicks management look good, because the Knicks have been incompetent for a long time. Or as my cousin Marley will say, dysfunctional. Absolutely dysfunctional. And come on, what's Memphis is just a bad situation. I don't know what they're going to do as far as coaching. J.B. Bickerstaff is not the answer. They didn't even keep him in Houston. I don't know where that, where that team goes. I think they start making some trades. Yeah, I was going to say, what happens with Mike Conley now? You know what I mean? Somebody well, that, like that. Well, that's another thing. You, they, you, they talked about the stretch that Memphis was on. They fired the coach when they lost, was it seven or eight in a row? Yeah, yeah, yeah. It was eight in a row. Seven of those games were without Mike Conley. Well, if you look at that team, what do you expect? I just watched that team play the Knicks last night. They have no ball handling when Conley's off the floor. You have Tyreek Evans, mm. is, and you have no outside shooting. They are an offensively challenged team. Without Mike Conley, that team has no shot. And Tyreek Evans, by the way, well, with Mike Conley, they don't have a shot either because Golden State. Well, when I say shot, conference. I meant shot at the, I meant <laughs> shot at the playoffs. Yeah, yeah. That's but, what I meant. But with Mike Conley, even with Mike Conley, I mean, it is what it is. But for Memphis – Tyreek Evans has also become one of their best players, and I'm not sure if that's a good thing or a bad thing in terms of like. Tyreek, I mean, it's good for Tyreek Evans. It's great for Tyreek paid. Evans because he's playing a lot better. He's shooting very good percentage from three now. But I mean, if that's one of the dudes you're leaning on, then what does that tell you about the rest of your roster? And remember, another thing that hurt mm-hmm. Memphis was their veterans leaving. Both Zach Randolph and uh, Vince Carter leaving. Yeah, but was- I feel like hurts them not on the court as much as it does like in the from locker. a leadership standpoint. Yeah. That's probably some of what we're seeing kind of transpire here. I agree with that, but it was time for those guys to go, and I think it's time for them. And maybe it's a year too early, but they got to start thinking about trading Marcus Hall. It's, it, you know, the grindhouse era, it's over. I think sometimes teams need to know when to break it down, when to blow it up. Uh, another team I'll just talk real quick before we go to break about that is the Clippers. You know, they're in free fall standing. Uh, I think it's time for them to probably trade DeAndre Jordan. I think where DeAndre Jordan could go could be very interesting at deadline. Brooklyn. He could go to – that's not happening. Um, <laughs> that's not happening. I think we could see him go to our uh, assistant producer, Matthew, uh, his Wizards. I think see, I could see him go there. He just, gave, he just threw up his hands. You got nothing to say he's about like, – you like, got nothing no, to say about – there's a mic the right here. There's you don't a mic want right here. Wizards? You got nothing to say about your Wizards? Daddy P, you don't want him on the Wizards? You don't want him on the Wizards? Because I – I'll accept him. Like, I don't, I don't, I, I'm not. Y'all are funny. I don't y'all are funny when you come on the mic, man. Y'all are no, funny. All you y'all. I'm not a big DeAndre Jordan fan. Neither am I. I, I think he's overrated. Can you so. beat DeAndre Jordan in a free throw shooting contest? Probably. I put my money on Matthew, P- yeah. Matty, Matty P. Yeah, like, he's not a good backcourt asset to the Wizards. Like, they, they can get anyone else. Well, front court, yeah. Front court, but yeah. yeah. Front court, you're right. Your backcourt is set. You guys are good there. No, I know, but like, I don't want DeAndre. So Jordan. no to DeAndre. <laughs> He's a waste. He'll be a waste of money. Yo, why are you getting mad at us? Yeah, <laughs> stupid comment. That's why I'm getting mad. At <laughs> thank, thank, thank you very much, Matt. Matt, 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 Matt. Yeah. You have to use hot jazz hoodie. I'm not yeah. letting. I'm not letting you slide today. Yeah. I yeah. Want, how I how want, you feeling, man? Six seven. Yeah. Oh, we got a 
Oh, okay. Dex has just pooped on your team. How? I'd say the other way. How did I poop on, poop on my team? I didn't do anything. I'm just starting problems. Remember, I'm Joe Budden today. Yeah, because you are so Joe Budden. So let's go. What, what? Check behind the pod. Uh, so what do you want to know about my Utah Jazz? Did I you, want to know. How are you feeling? Six yes. out of seven now. I mean, I'm surprised. No oh, more at, take note. It's take note. Uh, Neto came back. Gobert came back. Hood, I don't know what's wrong with Hood. He doesn't want to play, I guess. But a six-game winning streak, that's insane. Donovan Mitchell. Donovan Mitchell. Looking good, 41, man. Dropping 41 points, tying franchise records. He was the second person. That was a franchise do, record, 41? Yeah, yeah. For a rookie tied, or a player? He tied. I think for a player. I'm pretty sure for a nah, player. Don't quote me on that. No, it has, Carl I feel like Malone's Carl had, Malone's had, had, had to have Maybe it's a rookie. But the last person to score 41 in the rookie season in the NBA was Blake Griffin, I think. I think that was yeah. the probably the night that he teabagged his Timothy Moskov twice. Yeah, it wasn't probably. that night. But, but um, yeah, <laughs> heartbreaking OKC. Um, we should have won that game. Should have won that The game. problem was we left uh, Rubio in for too long. He just needs to sit the bench in the fourth quarter situations. <laughs> For some reason, he just decides he has to shoot. Hey, I maybe, don't know why. Maybe it's time. Maybe it's time to start playing Mitchell more down the stretch. Oh, of course, um, I'd be a fan of that. Especially because yeah, yeah, yeah. look at your eyes a little yeah, bit. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Before we go to break, the question that I always ask every time we talk about I don't the miss jazz. Gordon Hayward. <laughs> that's, that's I don't miss Gordon going. Hayward. Do I don't. Gordon no, Hayward? I like Donovan Mitchell, and I'm sticking with my boy Mitchell. You sure you don't miss Gordon? Hayward? I don't miss Gordon Hayward. Look where he is right now. See, I'm gonna have to ask you this when you. I'm gonna look. That's messed up, man. <laughs> well, I, I, I don't miss him. I don't miss him. He misses the basketball court. He does. He's, but he's playing League of Legends or Dota with Jeremy Lin or somewhere. So what does it matter? I wrote that story for yeah, that Jer- Yeah, yeah, Brian well, Fonseca down there. Well, you know what? If I got to get paid, paid millions of dollars to be playing League of Legends, I probably would too. Yeah, I probably would. I probably would. <laughs> on that note, we are going to go to break. When we come back, we're going to have a little bit of chatter on the NFL why I'm still boycotting the NFL, why I've not watched the NFL game this season. Yes, I'm still strong. And why I'm disgusted with their uh, fake giving for social justice, whatever that means. We also have some boxing and soccer to get into. We will talk to soccer. Yes, soccer yes. on the A Hard to Tell so- podcast when we come back. It ain't hard to tell where to get the latest merchandise from Backpack Broadcasting. Gear is now available via T Public. Visit the Backpack Broadcasting T Public online store to get shirts, hoodies, mugs, and phone cases. Represent your favorite Backpack Broadcasting shows, including the Sports Walk, Sideline Stories, and of course, the Ain't Hard to Tell podcast. Check out the special offers for our podcast listeners at http colon backslash backslash t dot pub backslash lic backslash backpack. Get in the game with your official Backpack Broadcasting here today. What's up, listeners? You know sometimes how it can be hard just to get from point A to point B. Now, when I have to get anywhere and I don't want to deal with the hassle of public transportation, it ain't hard to tell how I get around. I always make sure to use the best car service app in the game. I'm talking about Lyft. Lyft offers rides in minutes. All you have to do is download the Lyft app, request the ride, and you will be on your way quickly. Lyft is all about happy riders and happy drivers. Take a ride with them and you'll see why 9 out of 10 rides end up with a 5-star rating. Lyft always has amazing offers for new customers. And I'm here to tell our listeners about a great offer today. Lyft is currently offering free ride credit to Ain't Hard to Tell listeners. If you are new to Lyft, then you are eligible and getting your credit is easy. All you have to do is download the app and use the promo code AHTTPOD to unlock your free credit today. Ain't hard to tell who has the best car app service. So use the code today and ride out loud with Lyft. Welcome back to the Ain't Hard to Tell podcast, episode 12. Dexter Henry and Brian Fonseca here with you. We thank you for listening. And uh, NFL, uh, Brian, I think, was going pretty strong with the NFL and wasn't watching the NFL like myself all year. But somebody got to start and Brian was like, yo, I have to watch Guys, do not ask me why anyone would want to watch. Don't misrepresent NFL me either for this. But no, no, this guy came out of his not watching NFL to watch the Giants play last week because Geno Smith was starting. That's right, folks. The great Geno Smith. All right, let me defend myself from the University of West Virginia, let me the school def- that I do not like. Let me defend. Well, you went to Pitt, that's why. That's right. Uh, let me defend myself real quick. Why so, I want to watch uh, first, Smith. first part, 
I was not calling it an NFL boycott. I just don't give a damn about, you know, the NFL, really. So when the whole Geno Smith boycott, when the whole <laughs> when the, no, but even last year I was like whatever. Anyway, it doesn't matter. Uh, okay. Geno Smith. So as I told you, I've shared the story before. I was a Jet fan up until I was like nineteen twenty, two thousand thirteen, two thousand fourteen. Oh, so long ago. Geno Smith was a second round pick in two thousand thirteen to the New York Jets, and from day one. He was never, he was destroyed by the media, destroyed by fans, never really given a fair shot at anything. And, you know, his performances left some things to be desired. However, he was in for the entire time he was there in a horrible, horrible situation that he could not win it, right? And then he's about to have the best season of his career. He's starting, they finally get some talent around him. And then <laughs> you're laughing because well, what, how did he you got know punched he's, in the face? Yeah, because that's what happened. <laughs> and then, how did you know he's going to have the best season of his career? Because Ryan Fitzpatrick did, and he's better than Ryan Fitzpatrick. The end. Doesn't mean that he was going to Then in 2016, he would have done better because he could actually move his feet. Well, Ryan Fitzpatrick ran a little bit that but year. But Ryan so. Fitzpatrick also maybe wouldn't have turned the ball over the way he did. And has a potential that's, for doing it. Ryan, Ryan Fitzpatrick also has a propensity for turning the ball Which over. he did. We're not debating Geno Smith and Ryan Fitzpatrick here. That's beside the point. <laughs> so, and then 2016, Ryan I see, Fitzpatrick... I see, what, I see what's happening. Ryan Fitzpatrick went down to earth, whatever. So then he goes to the Giants. I don't know why, uh, to, be, to be quite frank. Because he got a job? No, but I felt like he could have gotten another <laughs> one, too, in a different situation. So... Geno Smith is here with the Giants, and I have been telling people, I had told you this, I had told Naomi this, friend of the show, and I have been saying to people, like, watch, he's going to get at least one start this year, it's going to happen, watch. So then he finally gets a start, however it happened, it is what and it is. And you were excited for the start. No, relax. I <laughs> <laughs> Me relax? I didn't, I didn't come back to watch football for Geno Smith. I was just like, oh, I want to see how he does, because I have been monitoring it for a few years, um, the Jets are awful. Awful, awful organization. Um, <laughs> All right. so, Tell them how you really feel, man. <laughs> so I wanted to see how it was in an organization that's less awful, which is apparently pretty damn awful now because they just fired everybody. Uh, so I just wanted to see how it went. And he had, you know, typical Geno Smith game. Yeah. Nothing around him. He had some good moments, and he had costly turnover. Which is what Geno Smith does. Yes. I, and what, that, still makes him, I listen, that still makes him at his potential probably a top 15 quarterback in the NFL because that's what you get with most quarterbacks. You put him in that situation, that's what's going to happen. I'm not going to be here to break down football because uh, like, I'm going to damn my I, 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 I'm just it saying. It sounds to me like, like the love you have for Geno Smith oh my God, is comparable God. to the love, love for Freddie Gibbs. Gibbs. Yeah, it, it sounds oh, just like that. <laughs> that. That's what I took from that story. The love you have for Geno Smith it sounds like the love you have for Freddie Gibbs. Uh, I still, I don't think Geno. <laughs> I, I don't think. To I don't, I'm, I'm gonna give you. I'm gonna come with you on this. I don't think Geno Smith is necessarily has been maybe put in some of the fairest situations that he had with the Jets. I'm not sure I'm going to rock with you on that he was going to have the best season of his career the year he got punched in the jaw. Well, that's not a fact. That's an opinion, but it's an opinion that I could back up with facts. I think that if you were going to have the best season in your career and you were a leader, you wouldn't get punched in the jaw. Or IK and Impali is not, you know, what about him not being a hothead? This is the same dude who, oh, when I'm he not. was at Louisiana Tech, got arrested and then had to be you know, stopped with like pepper spray and tasered because he was resisting arrest I was still, in college. I was still around covering some of the Jets at that time. And I don't think many people in the locker room cared for Geno Smith that much. And I, You're probably right. And from what I saw on you, even other people I talked to, and I don't think when I, when I can poly, uh punch him in the jaw, I think some people were like, okay. You know who didn't care for him that much? Rex Ryan. And Rex Ryan right now, who's out of the NFL, uh, you know, said what he mm -hmm. said about Geno Smith, and then Geno Smith, you know, commented back. I don't remember the full quote off the top of my head, but I posted it on Twitter. Excuse me. And basically, there were some, you know, there were some reports out there floating around saying that, oh, Geno Smith said, I saved his job. 
when in reality you see the quote which i actually pulled from right. youtube yeah, posted I mean, the clip and then people were like oh okay he said we saved his job you which is real true. hard to defend which is that. which is true because because of stuff like well, that no, but it's for, look it's at how the media covers them look at how people like manish no, meta look at how people like manish meta no, cover you're him. right from the New York Daily News. And it's a News. bad job. Yeah. And, and, and you know what? You know what? Just we talked about this. We talked about this when Ian is here. Journalists need to do a job of calling other journalists who do bad journalism out. When you're not doing your job or you're stealing sources. <laughs> oh. <laughs> you got to watch for some people to do. No, we spoke about that. And it's true. So uh, on that on that opinion, some people may listen to that and say, oh, Brian's here defending Geno Smith. No, I think he's defending journalistic integrity here and you don't say something that somebody didn't say or take it out of context regardless of who it is and then as soon as he says something people take the opportunity to slander his character which is what manish meta was doing for the majority of time he was here yeah so it's like i mean if you don't this like this is why i defend if you don't like a it's player or you don't I think, think it's he's good, going you to be aaron Rodgers. attack yeah right you shouldn't make an attack on a player i don't agree with journalists to do that or journalists who i think who maybe play that route, and you're entitled to do whatever you want to do. I think they just want the attention of being the aggressive journalist, so the journalist to ask the tough questions, but or writes the tough articles. But I don't really think they're writing anything yeah. of substance. And it also looks worse because you know, he's black. Yeah. So I mean. Well, you know, I mean, it's it's just it's you look at black quarterbacks not getting the the same or fair shake or benefit of the doubt that other people have. We saw what happened to Tyrod Taylor a couple weeks ago when he got benched, which he should not have been benched for. The Bills, the Bills. We're talking about the Bills, folks. The Bills. But we're, we're talking too much about football in that sense. So I was gonna, what I will talk about in football I want to get to is the NFL did announce that they will be giving $90 million uh, to social injustice social causes something this something is where similar. this is where we give you the floor and then we had and this was a big topic of conversation with some people who called malcolm jenkins a sellout malcolm jenkins said hey you know what i'm going to stop my anthem protest because now the nfl has decided they're going to put some money behind something i don't know what that thing is i'm as confused at this as much as i was confused about unity i have no idea what this is social issues or causes could be anything it could be helping some kids in a foster home that are un that's a social issue right but that's n and that's fine and those kids deserve the money and the help so i'm not saying that but that's not what people were kneeling for like i haven't heard the nfl or seen them put out a statement and said hey we are putting our money to these causes that people were actually protesting against they're not doing that so sorry me who's not watched nfl all year I'm not falling for the okie doke. You're not going to catch me. I see right through it. You're just saying, oh, let's give them this money or say we're going to give it to something so that y'all shut up, sit down. <laughs> nah, come on. How many times is the NFL going to pull the wool over everybody's eyes? They haven't said anything. They haven't said they're going to do anything. They are not addressing the concerns that people are actually protesting. That's the issue. And that's my problem with that. So I understand the people who were upset at Malcolm Jenkins because they're like, why are you now stopping your protest? You have not actually accomplished what you set out to accomplish. Y you know, just because somebody says social issues, that's a blanket statement. That could apply to anything. That could be like, I have an issue with this cup right here. For people listening, you won't be able to see it. This cup is a little chip on it, just making it up. That's a social issue for me. Now I don't <laughs> want to drink water from this. Get out of here. I mean, like, no, that's not what these guys are protested and it's ridiculous that's really all i have to say on that the nfl is ridiculous i'm still continuing my boycott i'm not watching the jets they've disappointed me by not tanking the way they should that's it <laughs> that's, that's that's pretty much all i have to say that moving on from Amer american football to what i call the real football that's right the real football that is football as folks myself and you yep so other immigrants, we understand sport around the world that everybody loves. Soccer, as they like to call it here in the States. Be careful with the word immigrant because certain people, you know. Oh, I ain't worried about 45. <laughs> um, I am excited for the World Cup next year, uh, 2018 World Cup. I'm excited. I know our director of photography, Luis Velez, who's a huge soccer fan, although he roots for a horrible team. All right, let's, 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 all right, let's do it. Let's do it. Let's do it. Let's do it. Horrible right. team. <laughs> We're going to talk about the real, exactly, the real football right now. Manchester right? United. I'm a Manchester United fan, for those who don't know. Nobody Extra should Henry know. Henry is a Liverpool fan. 
Yes, I am. They got a good win. They got a I like Dan, win I like Daniel Sturridge. League, whatever. We kill. We killing people. Last time we played you, paid you, we killed you. So it doesn't matter. That's all I'm saying. That's all I have to say. But yeah, like you said, the World Cup is coming, and I'm so excited. This is the one time a year where I say I'm a fan of soccer, and people don't look at me like I have five heads. And it's okay to talk about soccer during. I would like to know. You know, what happened was one of those moments when somebody tells you that their team killed your team, and you can't say nothing. I just had to shut up real quick. I was just like, <laughs> you can't well, say nothing. Can't because say nothing. We I, put you in I, your was, place. I was thinking about that game, and I was like, oh damn, that, <laughs> match, that match really hurt. Yeah, it man. really hurt. It's okay. It hurt my soul. You guys are not on the come up. But we're on the better come up, so. All right. Go, okay. <laughs> uh, the group the groupings came out for the World yes, Cup last yes. week, and I got a chance to look through them. It was pretty excited about it. It's an interesting year, Lewis and Brian, because there's a lot of teams and powers that were in it before, but they're not. The U.S. isn't in. So, Italy didn't make it. Yeah, yeah, the major teams, um, like you said, are U.S. Is it true that they're starting their own tournament? Okay. All right. Let's <laughs> talk about that for a quick second. Next, you're sending me a link. He was just like, I oh, did. he just said, are you interested in this? And he sent me the link and I click it and he said, oh, USA and Italy and other teams are planning to start a tournament with all the teams who didn't make it in the World Cup. I was just like, you cursed. What the? Yeah, it you was, definitely like, cursed. This, <laughs> like, I said, leave it to America to try to make something out of like the situation. You know what I mean? Like try to make their own thing. Yeah, we didn't make it. But, you know, other teams didn't make it. So, you know, let's make it a league so we can all have fun together. It's, no. a, it's a loser's ball. <laughs> it's a loser's tournament. It's like it's like how nobody cares about the NIT. Right? In, in <laughs> exactly. Right? Exactly. It's the same thing. Like, exactly. who, who watches the NIT? If no you, one. I mean, there's some. Yo, I covered the NIT championship last hard. year, Dexter. I'm sorry for you. I'm sorry you <laughs> to sit through that. I wouldn't want to sit through that. Like, I would not personally want to sit through that. Like, who wants to go and watch that? I mean, Matt said that he watches it. Well, if you're a junkie, <laughs> but see, I can't knock people because I'm a junkie. I will watch somewhat if you give me the nba d league championship i'm turning on and watch i'm a basketball junkie yeah me too right, if, pitt, if pitt was in the nit you'd watch no no well granted well, well, right I, expect, I expect more from my school well granted no. the teams that didn't make <laughs> it yes go ahead the teams that didn't make it are like really <laughs> are really really good teams so like you said usa yep. chile netherlands chile. italy there's some cameroon, there's cameroon I, I, Coast. Coast. Yep. Yeah, it's just a whole bunch let of me hear that really accent good. again what? Chile? Chile. Chile. <laughs> right. I'm Ecuadorian. We didn't make it. Oh, that's another thing. Ecuador I'm didn't make it. I'm Ecuadorian and American. Though. My two teams did not make it. So I have nothing. Like, Who are you going to root for? I don't know. I might have to go South America. So I might go for Brazil. However. Oh, that's got to hurt your soul. It hurts my soul a lot. But I have a lot of pride. But I'm going to go for the underdog Peru, which is in the World Cup. Los Peruchos. Ah, yeah, let's, let's I don't know them. who I'm. I don't mm. know who I'm rooting for. I usually, I'll probably get behind England because I, I, I do. They suck. And every family year. over there, <laughs> but they, they have not done anything on the world stage. Suck everywhere I don't know who I'm gonna get behind. I usually, get, I usually like to root for the Ivory Coast, and I can't get behind them. Mm -hmm. So this is an interesting year for me where I don't know who I'm gonna root I, for. I feel your pain. Is like, Mexico in the World think? Cup? Yes, they are. Okay, so I can root for who them. Who do you think are, is gonna that. win? Because I have like a top four that I think are gonna be. If you ask me right now today. Yeah. To put my money in who I think is going to win, I'm going with France. Mm. That's I had. France I really the, like France. See, the they're young. They're dangerous. They're great up front. I, I agree with you. They have so many great players, but they're still young. So they have. They don't have this. That concerns me. The but team. sometimes I like that youth where you don't even know how crazy it's going to be on this yeah, world stage. It's and maybe scary it's a good, good man. It's just scary. scary good. Who you got? Who do you? All have? right. So my final four, basically, and like you know, the top four teams, it would be Brazil. Germany, okay. Belgium, Ooh. and France. I give well, I agree. Up. I agree with you on the, on those top four teams. Yeah. I'm not. Belgium is a lot. They're sleeper because I don't think a lot they of people give them credit. Last year they went really far. Yeah, they did. They, they did last really time. Far. They last they, they went really really far. Yeah. Uh, Brian, uh, who's your rooting interest before we go to break? Whoever the Republicans don't like. Oh. Uh, <laughs> well, well, I mean, the, the way we're afraid of the rest of the world, or at least our uh, Iran is so I hope everybody is in the world. Well. Yo, you gotta rock with Iran. You gotta rock with Iran. I'm Puerto Rican, so we never make the World Cup anyway. <laughs> yeah, it's not, it's not gonna happen. Um, and we do it. We do have some people. That's why I said Mexico. We have some people here producing it around that are of Italian descent, and uh, no Italy. Um, what, Matt, what are you? What are you doing in the World Cup? I'm German. You forgot. I got a fail safe. I'm rooting for Germany, baby. Ah, you have a fail safe. And Iceland. Iceland. Yeah. All right. Uh. Whatever, man. Like, Why are you mad at 
Iceland. 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 Why, who's mad at Iceland? Iceland? Are you also from Bulgaria or... or You're yeah, acting like I he's just be. making up I countries. I might be. I don't know. I don't know. He hasn't looked into his lineage. Yeah. Why are you so mad, yo? Yeah. Yo, I'm going to look into my lineage and I'm going to find well, out I told you I was something Puerto Rican, wild. You didn't believe that. I bet you, I bet you, I bet you I'm 2% Brazilian. And if I'm not gonna, I don't why, care. Why so would I'm you not, take I'm the bet? I'm not, because I don't care. All right, uh, I'm not betting you. What, I'm not what, actually betting before, you. Before we break, let me just... Lewis, was there any groups... Uh, there were some interesting groups here. Any groups in the World Cup play that you found very intriguing? Well, the thing is, is that... This is the crazy thing. Like, it was really, really, really balanced out. There's no... Um, el, um, grupo de muerte, like how do they say it in Spanish? Like, you know, there's no group of death, really. Because er, there's basically, like, two top teams yeah. in each. The only one I could say, Argentina, has a, a pretty mm. tough... Like, it's pretty well balanced out. They're like decent teams, but they're not like amazing teams either. That's the thing. So what I think the teams that you think are gonna make it are gonna make it through the round of 16, but it's gonna make it harder. Like that next round is gonna be insane because all the top teams are gonna be facing off. With the can't game. wait. That's gonna I, be interesting. I can't wait. I absolutely can't wait. Um, I was doing a show during the last World Cup on TV, doing some coverage for it, and it was fantastic. So I can't wait again. All right, when we come back, uh, our third segment. We're just going to talk about whatever we feel like talking about. I, we hadn't decided. This is nothing planned. We're just going to talk about it. Ain't hard to tell. Stick around. We'll be right back. Sports Guru is the place where fans talk about sports via video. All videos are 60 seconds or shorter. Sports Guru makes the video look more professional and fun by adding automated on-screen graphics. You can follow your favorite sports by team, trending, new, or by people you follow, and more. Type in the title of your video and it will automatically, that's right, auto magically go into your on screen graphics. It's just that simple. Tag your teams and publish sports. Let's talk sports. The best new sports web series is here. It's from Backpack Broadcasting and it's called The Sports Walk. The Sports Walk is a series where diverse sports fans take a walk and share their views at the intersection of sports and society. The entire first season is now available on Backpack Broadcasting's YouTube channel and BackpackBroadcasting.com. See what other sports fans have to say about a variety of issues in the world of sports. Watch all 13 episodes from season one and take the Sports Walk today. Welcome back to the Ain't Hard to Tell podcast. Best new podcast out. You can find us on iTunes, Google Play, Stitcher, TuneIn. You know where to find us. Thank you for tuning in. Uh, and this segment, we, we talked about some things that we could talk about that's been going on in the world of sports and just anything else. And uh, boxing, uh, some interesting stuff. Uh, last weekend, Miguel Cotto fought his last fight at the Garden. Uh, Brian Fon Brian Taker was there. What the hell did you call me? I don't know, man. <laughs> I don't have to say your last name that often outside of this show. I should get, I should get it right, but oh well, messed up a name. It happens. Okay, so do? Miguel Cotto's retirement fight. Are you sad as a as a Puerto Rican? Are you sad that your countryman is no longer going to be able to step into the ring and somewhat dominate like he did in his latter years of boxing? Nah, he's leaving at the right time. Uh, so we'll start there. Um, I thought he would have won the fight had he not tore his bicep. I know a lot of people. A lot of, you know, people were, like, not too happy with the result because Miguel Cotto was the, the hometown favorite, even though he was Saddam Ali's from Brooklyn. It was really a 90-10 to 10 Miguel Cotto crowd. But, you know, <clears throat> I feel like this loss that he had by decision doesn't put a dent on his legacy at all. I don't think it matters no. that much. It is what it is. He's a first ballot Hall of Famer. He had a great career. It was a great fight, and I thought he would have won if he didn't tear his uh, bicep in the seventh round, uh, regardless of what else is being said out there. Yeah. But it was a great. It was crazy because this is somebody I've been watching since I was eight, nine years old on TV, since it was on HBO coming up, and then to be there and cover him in his last fight, what, 15 years later, that is insane. Yeah. You know, just those kind of those are the moments. Those are the reasons why so you cover I, sports. I'm keeping the the the, the final scorecard. The credential, I always keep the credential anyway. Uh, I'm keeping the press kit, all that stuff, definitely. And yeah. more boxing real quick, real yes. quick, before we get into the nutty stuff that we want to get into. This weekend, this weekend, <laughs> two big fights. Lomachenko, Rigondeau. Can't wait. Vasil Lomachenko, wait. Guillermo Rigondeau for Can't. free on ESPN. And Tevin Farmer. Your boy. First boxer I ever did a story on last summer before he fought here in Brooklyn. He's fighting for a world title, which is going to be on HBO. Yes, so which is huge for him. 
and, and Tevin, we're trying to get Tevin Farmer on the show, so hopefully yeah. Tevin Farmer, we will get him up I can here. confirm that we have reached out. We have reached out to Tevin <laughs> Farmer. We're trying to get him on, on the show. Uh, I know we've done a couple shows in a row without guests. We will have a guest confirmed for our next show. It's coming. You guys will see who that mm-hmm. is. We don't need um, nobody, though. <laughs> Everybody needs a little help. We need somebody. Um, Tevin kidding. Farmer fight, I'm definitely intrigued to watch on HBO and Will because he's fighting for a world title. And yeah. you've, you've talked to me so much, and I learned so much about him through you as coming up, and now he gets his, this title shot. Yeah. Um, you know I'm a huge Lomachenko fan. Yeah. I, I, love the, I love the way he fights. I will just take exactly what David Diamante said a couple weeks ago. The on this podcast. On this podcast. This man is just a, a beautiful fighter. Yeah. Um, just to watch him work is amazing. I like Lomachenko to win this fight. I don't think it's going to be easy. Mm. I think this is going to be the toughest fight of his career. I'm definitely tuned in Saturday night. Um, and I, I, I'm, I'm just excited. This is a fight I'm actually really excited for. Yeah. There's been a lot of fights this year. I've actually been like, yo, I'm really excited for it. Right. Triple so, G and, uh, yeah, Triple G and Canelo. Canelo. Um, we'll see what happens with that Danny rematch. Jacobs and Triple G. Danny Jacobs and Triple so, G. There's been a bunch. Broner and uh, Mikey Garcia. Yeah. So there's, there's, <laughs> there's, there's been a bunch of stuff. Um, so yeah, good stuff, good stuff for boxing. I'm rolling with Lomachenko too, by the way. I'm rolling with Lomachenko. I haven't really well. picked it up. All right. Yeah. Uh, we have a guest here today with us uh, in studio. Uh, he is a guy who's done a lot of stuff uh, for us. He's sitting behind the scenes now. He produced a lot of backpack broadcasting stuff. Uh, if you've watched any of our live streams, some other content we've had. Uh, Paul Becker, uh, the great Paul Becker, is here. Yes, sir. How are you? Paulie B, what's up, man? Not much. What's going on? I'm, I'm good, man. I'm good. How's the sports life treating you? know, you're a Giants fan, uh, Yankees fan. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah. Giants not so good. No, the Giants. No, no, no. Yankees yeah. gave you a lot of joy this year. Oh yes, they 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 made a, they made it a lot farther than I actually thought they were going to. They had no business getting as far as they did, but I'm happy that they did because it shows me that next year they're going to be a whole lot better. Yeah, but then they fired Joe Torre. Well, that's was way long ago. That was long ago. <laughs> <laughs> but I I wanted to say something in last segment about the Giants. Okay. But I I didn't want to say this. I understand that, okay, the Giants are 2-9. and nine. Their season's basically done. They're not doing anything else. The season's else. done. Yeah, I, I know that. <laughs> I'm basically. But, and, and I understand Coach McAdoo's idea of benching Well, he's not the Eli coach just, anymore. Yeah. Well, former yeah. coach Eli Manning. Benching Eli, you know, just, you know, to rest him. Okay, fine. But why Geno Smith? I, that, that's, I agree that's with I, that. I didn't understand I agree with that. why Geno Smith, because they have three, I believe, three quarterbacks they do. on the, the roster. Eli, Geno, and Davis, 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 Webb. Name? Davis, Davis Webb. Webb. Davis Webb. That's who they should be playing. That's what the, exactly. Yeah, that's who they should that. have started. But I, I, it, for the life of me, I don't understand why. why I don't understand why they started. Don't, yeah. Here's what I'm saying. And now they're going back to Eli. Davis Webb. <laughs> I don't understand it either. It, it, it I, I doesn't take, make sense to me. Paul, I take it you're not a fan of Geno Smith. I'm not because, and you know this as well as anybody, how bad he played when he was with the Giants. Uh, um, the Jets. With the Jets, excuse me. Oh, I know. He was Not awful. 100% his fault. Why the Giants signed him, I still do not know to this day. Paul didn't even want him on the team. I don't even know why he's on the team in the first place. He's better than he's better than Mark Sanchez with the Jets. I think yes, just that, that is out true. There. That is true. But I still don't understand why the Joe. Why? I think no. They should have played Davis Webb. I they agree should with have. Yes. They should be playing Davis Webb and right now. They, they should be. And, I agree with that. And but I think, think I think when Geno leaves, you're gonna miss Geno Smith. No, I won't. The way Matt misses Gordon Hayward. No, no. I, <laughs> for the record, I don't miss Gordon Hayward. <laughs> I, I, I will not. I, I'll actually be happy when he's not on the Giants anymore. I don't even know why he... This is a one-year contract, so you only, you know... Uh, listen, that's probably I, I the don't last even want to know it. what's going on. I, <laughs> All right, so... Ma- so in, 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 the last thing I'm going to say about this, McAdoo yes. should have been fired the moment he benched Eli Manning, in my opinion. Uh, I probably. I don't even know that. why he, he coached last week, but he, he should have been fired the moment that he benched him. I don't disagree with you on that. Good I'll, stuff on the Giants. Uh, so today... I, I, I know you're a Jets fan, but still, I, I, I still want to know... Why? Why you disagree? Why disagree with what? With what I just said about about. Oh, I don't disagree. I said I I don't disagree. Oh, oh you I don't? agree. Oh, okay. I absolutely agree with you. Oh. I agree completely oh, yeah. with you. So do I. Uh, before before this podcast today, we were somehow the topic of 
Poems of Love. Oh God, here we came go. about because I was writing a story. I'm oh, writing. Like, oh, wait, wait, I'm wait, writing. Whoa, 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 I'm writing a story whoa, here. Whoa. I'm writing a story here. I'm looking mad. I'm writing Look a story. <laughs> I'm writing a story. Why so defensive? <laughs> we haven't because even that's introduced. What it is because you, because when you saw the quote, you said, "Oh, Paul has a girlfriend." Wait, wait, no, no wait. Cool. Let's explain. Let's explain. Let's no, I hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on. Dexter, explain what's happening. We did not see a quote. We, as we do in the studio, we have a bunch of laptops around. One of the laptops, <laughs> way Paul too many laptops, happened to be using, had. Uh, Matt, could you probably tell me what exactly it was? <laughs> it was a. So, for the record, um, I was getting one of the laptops ready for our podcast, and I was signing Paul out of his accounts accordingly, and I came to a tab that says, love poems to make your girlfriend smile. And I just had to take a moment, and I looked at Dexter, and I said, Dexter, what is going on around here? Yo, it wasn't me. I, yeah, and I had to take a moment to look at it. Because not that I'm like, anti-love poems, because no, no, I'm no, not. Of course, it's you know, so, they're great. Love but, poems are great. Yeah, but in, in that moment of time, I'm saying... Love poems sometimes can seal the deal for you, man. All right, I'm going to pass the mic back to Paul, but... Uh, <laughs> I want to I wanna, yeah, yeah. get his story. Okay, so I'm... A, it's a very good segue. I, was, I am currently in the midst of writing a Christmas bedtime story for myself just because, just, you know, just, you know, to pass the time. That's really what the love quote was about. It's not that I don't have... It's not that I have a girlfriend or anything. Not yet, anyway. But that's a topic for a whole nother show. Like know, that's a topic I, for a whole nother show. I want to know how the love quotes go with hand in hand with the Christmas bit. <laughs> because it's Jules. Wait, are, are you sharing? When I this? finish the story, I'll show it, it to you. You what? are. You will share this Christmas bedtime story with us. Uh, whenever I finish it, yes. I'm Who are you of... reading the Christmas bedtime story to? Yes, good question. <laughs> I don't know. It's whoever wants to read it. It doesn't matter. I'm just writing it just for the sake well, of writing I'm it. never going to hate on anybody's I'm trying expanding to write my, I'm, I'm, I'm expanding my creative writing. horizons. I, listen, man. I'm all, I'm all <laughs> that, That's really what that. it's about. That's really what it's about. So because we saw this Panties. from you okay. and your knowledge for the truth <laughs> of the skills of writing a love poem oh, begs yes. the question. Yes. Who else has written a love poem? <laughs> And does love poems work for you? How nope. do you read your love poems? Do you read them in a deep voice like this? No, I do not. You don't? No. You don't read your love poems like no. that? Okay. I have Let's check. Brian, how's the love poems working out for you? <laughs> Just... You strike me as the kind of guy that would write some love poems. Yeah, Typically to a Why? trap because I'm creative a trap sounding or... a trap sounding beat with a similar Freddie Gibbs type flow. Yes, I was about that's, to... oh, that's the way I would hear it. I was about to say if the only love poems Brian writes are for Freddie Gibbs. Yeah. Speaking of love poem, he has a love song called oh, Even oh, Hold on, hold on, hold on. You'll see where on. I'm going with this. He has a love song called Even Higher Learning, which is dedicated to weed. So if I wrote a love poem, it'd sound like that, except it wouldn't be to weed. Because I don't In smoke. The... And drink. in the great words of Stephen A. Smith, stay off the weed. <laughs> On that note, I want to know. Uh, yes. So, isn't there something else we have to get to you, Paul? Oh. We'll get to that in a second. Say what you want to know. That. Say what you want to know. <laughs> oh, <laughs> go, go ahead, Ryan. Yeah. Go ahead, Ryan. It's a good segue. Go ahead. Oh, go so ahead. Please, speaking of, speaking go ahead. of, speaking go ahead. of love, oh, Paul, here Paul, we go. Uh, Paul apparently has a tale of love. Wait, not just wait, the you tale. Did not? Remember, wait, yes, wait. we remember the tale, but you did not. You did not necessarily. It's not about love. This is about breaking up with a love. And Paul arguably has the worst story of breaking up with somebody that I've in ever heard in my life. In your opinion, when I first Word. told it to breaking you, up I've said, never heard you anybody. Said, that was a bad job. It was a that horrible was a bad job. job. <laughs> and when Paul tells this story, which I will let him tell, it was an. I'm changing the word. It wasn't just a bad job. It was, it was an horrible awful job. job. I want to know. <laughs> Yo, all right, all right. I don't know why you're still. Okay. So Brian this, does not know this story. Okay, I'm so here for all this nonsense. So oh, it's nonsense. See, Proceed. This is what. This is. See, it's segments like this that that get the most views because this is what people want to hear. It's really? All hopefully. It's all hopefully. Bad. Aside aside from all the sports stuff, which is great. I agree. It's it's this type of banter that is what people Paul, want to listen to. Paul, you're stalling. Please, onto the love story. Okay, so, so, here's, so here's the story and for anybody who, who wants to know. I dated this girl back in 2010 and we, we, we were together for a year and a half. <laughs> Whatever the case. Things, things went downhill and I wasn't feeling, you know. Your I, feelings changed. Yeah, yeah, I wasn't feeling it. 
So I decided, you know, to end it. In, in a way, now I stress, in a way that would not hurt her. Oh, I stress that <laughs> in a way that would not hurt her. So I was at her house and, oh. and, I, and I, I tried to figure out, hmm, what's the best way to do this without hurting your feelings, without, you know, making... <laughs> so, <laughs> so God, I, I can't believe I'm telling the story. So I was on the computer with her sitting next to me. I had my arm around her and I said, listen, <laughs> no, I'm serious. And, and I, I was, know you are. I was trying to let her down easy. And basically, the case in point, I changed my Facebook status from in a relationship to single, <laughs> basically right in front of her face. <laughs> and, she, and that was basically it. I, I, my, oh, my, Hold ladies on. and gentlemen, this is not who I am. I was. Wait, you did that with your arm around her? Yes, I did. Because <laughs> that would make it better. I tried that would to make do it, it in a way that wouldn't hurt her. I guess I Paul, failed. Let me show you how this doesn't work, right? Even if it's your friend. <laughs> Yo, man, I hate you. I hate you. When my arm is around you, I'm going to make it all better. <laughs> Yeah, that's what Listen, it man. I, yeah. I understand did now. Did you Look. did you not think that by not communicating? I no, I I was communicating with her. You were communicating. No, you didn't. Right? You were you communications didn't. major, right? What? You were a communications major, right? No, I was an IT major. Oh, all right. You didn't communicate with her. That you would have been a better joke status. if you were a communications <laughs> major. <laughs> you just what changed the status. Yes, I know. While next to somebody, you couldn't even say, yo. Wait, 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 hold on, hold on. What what, what happened after? Oh. <laughs> That's what I wanted. Nothing. Nothing happened. Did she did she, did she no. get up and walk away? Did was she turn to you and be like, really? She was hurt. Yeah, wait, but yeah. She, she wasn't like she wasn't like upset. But but he, here's the thing. But was she Hispanic or No, I I don't remember what she was. But she What? No, no, I, I really don't what? remember what she was. <laughs> I don't remember. Well, what is it? Well, I don't know what it matters, but no, whatever. No, it doesn't matter. But but he, but the craziest part is that two weeks after we broke up, she got she got together with another guy who I know, and she's still with him to, well, to this day. What? I don't, I don't blame her because she was hurt and immediately tried to get rid of that pain that you caused her. Wait, how how quickly after? Two weeks. I think about two That's or three too weeks fast, after. Man. Two or three weeks after. That's way too fast. People got to deal with the pain. How do you got to deal with the pain? But still, like. Come on. Oh, you gonna talk about your pain now? They still come on. <laughs> I mean, listen, it, it doesn't matter to me. I'm over it. I mean, have you? I done it a little differently? Yes. A little differently. I, 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 I should have done it a little bit differently, but again, <laughs> no. I never, I never broke up with a girl before at that time. So, so you were, you were novice really to the situation. Most, exactly. And I didn't. And again, I tried to do it in a way that wouldn't hurt her. And I guess, in your opinion, and it, a valid opinion now. I did a horrible job. We're going to have a poll on this. And I think most people, I, I'm confident most oh, that's people probably, say. That, that's definitely going to be now a poll trending on Most Twitter. people right. will did say. Did Paul do a bad job in his breakup? Yes or no? I'm, and I guarantee I'm going, I'm 99% going, is going to I'm going for yes. 99% yes. There'll be one vote for no and it'll be from you. <laughs> I don't even that's participate be. in this poll. Though. You shouldn't be able to participate I'm in the poll. I'm not going to. You shouldn't. <laughs> I'm not going yeah, to. Before we go, does anybody else have any awful breakups? Oh, yes. That's what, like yo, I, exactly what I was going to ask because I don't have one. I don't. Because I don't do things like that. Well, not yet, because Freddie Gibbs didn't do anything bad. <laughs> <laughs> what? Yeah, if Freddie Gibbs has a bad album, like, you're going to break up with him and, oh, like, like, not listen to him anymore. Definitely. Did you stick with Nas after Nostradamus? Um, okay, I, I did, but it hurt. It's okay. painful. So, it would probably be similar. Yeah. Well, Nas is a much better rapper than Freddie Gibbs, but that's, that's a whole other point. Freddie Gibbs is top five right now. All right, on that note, uh, <laughs> maybe this could be a top five episode of Ain't Hard to Tell. Maybe it could be. Like th thank you, Paul, for, for coming and, and watching the episode. I'm serious. And sharing your tales. <laughs> very brave right of you now. to do that. Thank you. I hope I can come back someday. Yeah, man, you can always come back. Uh, Paul Becker uh, did a lot of producing for us with Backpack Broadcasting. I uh, want to thank our great production team, uh, Matthew Feniza, our executive producer. Matthew Panico, who is not a fan of DeAndre Jordan, and Luis Velez, our director of photography, who's very excited about the World Cup and is going to root for Peru. All right, that's it for episode 12 of the Ain't Hard to Tell podcast. Brian's still going to be angry. I'm happy as always. We'll see you guys next time. Angry about what? What a misrepresentation <laughs> of my mood. Like, yo. <laughs> Freddie, give us top five.